Hi, Mud. Hey guys, we're gonna do a quick op art. It is a worm tunnel. It'll look something like this when we're done. I still need to finish this yellow. And just what you need is a pencil, piece of paper. This is just copy paper, cheap. Uh, Sharpie, and you can use color pencils, you can use crayons, watercolor, whatever you have. So this is how we're going to start. First, you're gonna take your pencil and you're just gonna do an easy line like this. Now, I'm gonna use Sharpie. So Sharpie goes through this kind of paper. So I'm gonna get a paper to use as a marker mat. Here's my marker mat. It's just an extra piece of paper. That's what I'm gonna use. So um, this is pencil because I'm gonna erase this. There's two different ways you can do a worm tunnel. This way, I leave it open because I want it to look like it's kind of expanding and going this route. If you put that line through there, it just looks like it starts and goes in different directions. Either way is fine, it's up to you. Now that I have this part, I'm gonna put my paper like this and I am just gonna draw squiggly lines little bit different. Doesn't really matter how they turn out. These are kind of turning out the same. So I'll try to go a different direction. And it's even okay if you have one that kind of goes off the page, if that's what you like. Maybe we have one that's coming from over there. Okay, now that I have my lines, I'm going to start doing little tiny rainbows. I like to call them like happy faces or smiley faces. I'm going to start at one side, go to the next again. And I'm kind of starting, if you notice, I put my, I start as close to the, uh, where I ended from the last one as I can because it gives it a better look. If you don't do this nice, big smiley face if you start doing them so they're kind of instead of getting a nice bump you're doing them flatter it won't look as bumpy so we want it to look like a worm has gone through our earth our paper and has made a big bump also if you see this i left some white space don't get sloppy you can always go back through with your sharpie and in fact i do it either way color it it makes like right here it makes it look darker so the f darker something is the further away it is from you so it just helps with the op art but don't be lazy and start going like this where you don't finish your lines that does not look good make sure you finish your lines oopsie that's not good and keep going so eventually you have something like this. Now you can see I've gone around each pencil. I have all my lines and I am slowly just making them bounce. This is something that's good to do maybe while you're watching a movie because maybe you've watched The Amazing World of Gumball 50 times but you want to watch it again, but you've already seen it a hundred times. Do something like this and it's a lot of fun. Now, these are getting pretty far separated. I don't want that. So I'm gonna to try to bring them back in together because it just makes the illusion look better. And now you can see where I'm leaving some white spaces. So when I'm all done, I am just going to take my Sharpie and darken those lines like that. Now when you're coming to the edge, it's okay to go off the page like this and just pretend that you're making that whole arch, but you're not. Now you can see how I went kind of fast. So again, I darken this up and all that does is it makes that canyon right here just makes it look darker. And then I'm going to start again on the next tunnel. Now, don't worry if you mess up. I've messed up a bunch of times, but guess what? You can
can't see where I've messed up. And I'm not going to show you. So you might think that you mess up, but just keep going. No one will ever notice it. Did you guys see that puppy dog looking in my video? That's my dog, Mud. He actually came from Mrs. McPherson's puppy. Mrs. McPherson, kindergarten teacher. She lives in our neighborhood too. And that's where we got our little dog. He's a cute, cute dog. Okay, so here I'm making it darker. Go a little slower. I went kind of fast and I made it too big right there when I was darkening it. But, so just go slow. Darken that canyon so it looks like your worm is really, really busy. He's a big worm. He's like the worm from Tremors, if you've ever seen that movie. Okay, so now this pencil line I'm going to get rid of. Because that's where I'm going to start shading. And some people like having the line there, and if you do, that's fine. Just use a Sharpie and draw that line. But I like it, like I said, looking like it's opening up. Now, we are going to use something called value. Okay, that's the darkness and lightness of the color. And we'll basically use three shades. And the way we get value is just by pushing harder or pushing softer. So I'll just start with this one right here. And now I am going to push really, really hard. About one third of the way up. Really hard. Do it on the other side. One third of the way up. Like this. Then I'm going to go a little bit lighter. And I'm going to do it about one third of the way up. Or I guess it's a sixth. So it's one third from this side. So one sixth of the way up of the whole entire thing. One sixth of the way up here. And then the last part. Just gonna do really light like this and depending on the color pencils you have these are pretty nice I can kind of smear them sometimes get a little bit nicer edge and then if you want to get really fancy you can even use some white across the top it just kind of lightens it up and helps the colors smear together you could even use some black oh where's my black make the shadows look a little bit darker and then your canyon will look really dark and you just keep going like that darker and lighter and pretty light darker but what you don't want to do is when you're coloring you don't want it to be a perfect line because then doesn't have that natural look where it gets lighter and then even lighter. When I color, I kind of do it kind of so it looks rough. And then when I fill it in, it's not as obvious when it goes to each of the different colors. So don't worry about making a perfect line there. Also, when you're coloring, you want to go in the direction you make your strokes in the direction of the shape. So I'm not going to color on a shape like this. I'm not going to color like this because that's not going to look right. I'm going to color in the direction of my bump. That makes it look better. That way, and I might do all my dark colors first. Sometimes that's, maybe I'll do three. If you notice, I'm kind of doing a rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green. You guys know what color comes next. Blue, because yellow and blue make green. That's why it's in the middle. Maybe I'll do four green. And I don't know what I'm going to do my next ones. Like this one, each one, and this was with crayon, each one is a different color. I've seen people who do every single one a different color. Every little section like this a different color. I think I'll do rainbow, but maybe this one red, maybe this one blue, and just kind of work the same way. You'll see it when I'm done. But remember, when you're coloring, even for this part, kind of color in the direction of your hump. It'll make it look better. Okay, I finished my first one. 
Now I'm going to start on my next one. And again, since I ended here, maybe I'll start the blue here and then just work the same direction. So my next color will be purple. So I didn't get to use any purple, but that's next in the rainbow. Unless you see a backwards rainbow, which are kind of cool and kind of rare. So my three colors, medium, and I'm going in the direction. My strokes are going in the direction of the shape. And I want to go really light, really, really light. And I'm going to add that white. I like the way the white looks, kind of scrambles the color. A little bit of black, a little bit darker, and I'm going to keep going. <laughs> 